Okay, sorry about that, folks. I had some technical difficulty. Uh, hopefully this is working now. Welcome to 10-Minute Two-Tip Tuesday. I'm Amelia Borland. I'm an occupational therapist and the owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training. And my apologies for being a little bit late today, y'all. Um, I was super fortunate. I had the opportunity to speak to a really, really wonderful group of um, residential care home administrators today at Torch, um, which is the Texas Organization for Residential Care Homes. Um, awesome organization. Uh, so I got back from that a little bit later than expected. But listen, there are two things from that talk that I thought I would share with y'all today on 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. If you're new to 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday, then let me give you a quick rundown. I'm gonna give you two super valuable tips in 10 minutes, okay? The first tip is for caregivers specifically, and the second tip is for caregiving organizations. So, um, before we get started, one more thing real fast. This is for educational purposes only, y'all. Anything that I say um, that reminds you of someone that you know, someone that you work with, etc., who you think needs to be assessed by a licensed healthcare provider, please make sure that that person is appropriately assessed by that licensed provider, as this is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for medical or health advice or a therapeutic relationship. Okay, that's out of the way. Um, if you see something wrong with this picture, then you already know where I'm going here with tip number one. Okay, so one of the things that is a safety hazard frequently that I see happen a lot is improper use of gate belts. Now, gate belts are a really valuable tool. Um, they're a great insurance policy kind of to have during transfers. And that's because they can help you to have a good grip on someone while you are transferring them without having to either grab onto the person or grab onto their clothing. And it helps make sure that you're moving a person from their center of gravity as opposed to up underneath their armpits, which is really not a safe place to move someone from. So, but what often happens is people don't use gate belts correctly. And um, I'm gonna go over just one example of how they're used incorrectly here. And you can basically see it already. Um, this is sort of an exaggerated version of gate belts not being tight enough. So in order for a gate belt to be safe and effective, it really does need to be pretty snug. And, and I should say that gate belts are not always appropriate in every situation. There are definitely situations where I would not use a gate belt to transfer someone. But in, in most situations, they are a great um, handy helper and a good insurance policy to have. But they do need to be pretty snug in order to work appropriately. Just like any other piece of equipment that you use, it's only as safe as you use it. So if you don't use a gate belt appropriately, um, if you don't use it safely, then it will not be a safe piece of equipment for you. So the thing really to know here is that the gate belt needs to be pretty darn snug. And I'll tell you the reason why, kind of for the rest of the tip here. The reason why gate belts need to be so snug is that if you have to catch someone, uh, you don't want it to slide up on their body. It needs to stay put where it is so that you can actually help to um, assist them with it. If it slides up on someone's body, it's liable to accidentally cause bruising. It can cause damage to their skin, including skin tears. Um, it certainly is not comfortable. And of course, if the gate belt is flat, going up on someone while they're going down, then it's pretty unlikely that you are gonna be able to actually stop a fall using a gate belt. So it's really important that if you are using gate belts, that they are nice and snug. And of course, as I said, there are some circumstances where you would not use a gate belt, where it wouldn't be safe to do so. Um, but in circumstances where it is safe, where you are using one, you want it to be pretty snug on there. Um, okay, a, a lot of times also people don't like having a gate belt on, totally understandable. Um, and they don't like that tight feeling. Again, totally understandable. Keep in mind, it's only temporary. We don't need to have gate belts on tight all the time. We don't need to have gate belts on all the time. 
Um, it's really just for those transfers where they're appropriate and for a short period of time. But if we don't have them on correctly, then they can, um, uh, then they can actually cause damage. So it's really important to know if you're a caregiver. Okay, that said, here is tip number two for today for caregiving organizations here on 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. And this is also something that, uh, that we talked about um, during the torch presentation today during that speaking event. And that was that if you're a caregiving organization and you're the leader of that organization, you can't be everywhere at once. Uh, you know that better than I do. I don't have to tell you that. But it's impossible for you to have eyes on everything all the time. And I know that all the great leaders out there who are watching this now, they're setting aside time to go to residents' rooms or to visit with their clients in their homes and, and make sure that everything is okay. But you can't be there all the time. It's just not possible. There are way too many things on your plate. And frankly, it's not your job to be right there with your residents all the time, right? It's your caregiver's job to be there with your residents all the time. And I bring this up because it's really important for leaders of care organizations to understand that in so many ways, it's really important to empower your caregivers to speak up if they see something that's going on with your clients or with your residents. Because often they're gonna be the only ones there who are there to see it. They are the boots on the ground. They're, ground. they're in the trenches doing the work. So if someone's gonna notice something, it's probably your caregivers. And you wanna make sure that your caregivers feel safe and empowered in order to speak up if they're seeing something that they think is a safety issue. Um, this is an important thing to make part of your training process. On the flip side of it, your caregivers can't speak up about safety issues or safety concerns if they're not trained in what those common safety issues and common safety concerns are. And I have seen this so many times um, in my practice as an occupational therapist that a caregiver um, uh, may not have recognized something was unsafe or they may not have recognized a red flag for an issue that was preventable, not because they didn't care. That's never the case. Care caregivers are some of the, the most amazing, dedicated, compassionate people you will ever meet in their lives. They care, trust me. It's that no one has ever given them the information that they need in order to allow them to recognize recognize those issues so that they can speak up about it. So empowering your caregivers both with the appropriate level of knowledge and training so that they can recognize issues and then empowering them to feel safe to speak up and communicate about those issues when they see them. I cannot overstate the importance of that and how important and really powerful your caregivers voices are in making sure that your clients, your residents, um, the, your caregivers themselves, and of course your organization is safe and healthy and well cared for. Um, okay, so uh, that's it for both of the tips today. If you are still looking out for the fall prevention series, again, I promise those, I, I am going to make those um, uh, available for release here coming up shortly. I'm working hard on it, y'all. Um, I know that it's a big priority for leaders to also get fall prevention training. So I'm working on making those recordings available ASAP and I will let you know when that happens. Um, one more quick announcement, announcement and I'm going to be releasing a little teaser for y'all tomorrow on May 27th. That's like coming up very soon in less than two weeks. I'm going to officially be launching the caregivers dilemma podcast y'all. Um, it's going to be super cool and there are several episodes that have already been recorded and they're all going to be released on the 27th and it's all about understanding the resources that are available to caregivers um, and the challenges that they face and really understanding their stories. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure that you are looking out for that information. Uh, like I said, I'm going to post a little teaser clip tomorrow for y'all to take a look at um, or a listen to sorry, and um, look out for it to be released on the 27th. I am super pumped. This has been in the works 
for a long time. Okay, now I'm really done. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the tips today. I hope that you were able to take something away valuable from them. Make sure you're looking out for 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday next week. And please, if you have any questions or concerns uh, about caregiver training, etc., cetera, um, please feel free to reach out and I will help in whatever way I can. All right, y'all, until next time, please be healthy, be well, and most of all, take care. Bye, guys.